Now to understand the ways in which Eliot draws upon the myths and uh, adopts the so-called mythical method, we have to look at the sources of the wasteland. Now when it comes to the discussion of sources of wasteland, it's various actually. So he draws upon Dante, he draws upon Shakespeare, Spencer, he draws upon Dickens, he draws upon the Upanishads as I already mentioned. And hence the work of Eliot, the wasteland, becomes extremely eclectic in nature as it is a conglomeration of knowledge and ideas and images that Eliot gathered from various sources across cultures, across histories. Now if we then locate the sources which uh, come under the domain of anthropology, we will find that there are two books which were particularly important. One was The Golden Bow by the anthropologist James Fraser, he was a Scottish anthropologist and uh, The Golden Bow was published in 1890 and it draws parallels among various myths and ancient rituals across cultures, across civilizations, across times and it argues that there are similarities among different histories and societies. So again Fraser in a Jungian manner he is trying to discover a few patterns in the world of myths and rituals and he discovers an organizing myth, an organizing myth or a narrative in which the well-being of a people of a land is bound up with the well-being of a king who rules over that land and within that myth the king, the ruler has to be killed or replaced before he degenerates into ill health for the betterment of the land because the betterment of the king is linked with the betterment of the land and in turn the people. So this is the organizing mythic narrative which is found in almost all civilizations according to James Fraser. And in this way he argues that there are similarities between, if you use Eliotian terms, antiquity and contemporaneity. Now we can argue that James Fraser's discovery of this organizing myth uh, is having its hegemonizing underpinnings which are usually associated with imperialism and, and colonialism where there is a broad generalization of all cultures which happens and in fact uh, another problem that we find in Fraser which is again related to the problem that I mentioned just now is that Fraser tries to present the entire idea of human civilization, human progress as a chain in which in the first phase people are fond of magic through rituals and then as they progress they start worshipping gods or God and then as they progress further they do away with their previous ideas about myths and gods and rituals and they emerge as 
scientific beings because they start to believe that by dint of science and technology they can master the universe and this is how Fraser presents the advancement of science and technology as an index of civilization and in so doing he in a way bolsters a very Eurocentric hierarchy which tries to again in turn strengthen the discourse of imperialism and, and colonization that European civilization is better than the other non-European non civilizations. Now I'm not going to go into these discourses because that again would take a lot of time but what I want to say is that Fraser's The Golden Bough is a key text to understand the sources of the wasteland and the mythical method that Eliot uses in the wasteland. Another book which was directly connected to The Golden Bough was Jesse Weston's From Ritual to Romance which was published in 1920 and it primarily focuses on the legend of the Holy Grail which is a Christian myth where the knight in the Arthurian legends quests for the Holy Grail which is the only chance for redemption and here we can connect it with the myth of the king and the Christian myth uh, got connected with certain anti-eating pagan fertility cults in J.C. Weston's From Ritual to Romance where he says that well it was not only Jesus who would come with the idea of the Holy Grail but there would be other Jesus like figures present in the pagan myths and fertility rituals which would die and uh, who would die and and get resurrected for the betterment of the people so these two books the first is from ritual to romance and another is golden bow these two books were extremely important to the development of the wasteland and the wasteland is a kind of poetic equivalent to the central ideas presented in these books and Eliot acknowledges his indebtedness to to this book called From Ritual to Romance in the notes that he provides with the wasteland so in wasteland the myth of the fisher king the figure of the fisher king often exemplified by Tiresias uh, represents an archetype of importance and sickness which is again symbolic in, in a symbolic manner represents the perils of modernity and the Fisher King embodies the spiritual bankruptcy and the moral degeneration located at the heart of the contemporary Anglo-American civilization so the contemporary civilization which is definitely a panorama of futility and anarchy is spiritually bankrupt morally degenerated and the Fisher King represents this and there are several figures in the wasteland several narratives in the wasteland which would try to foreground this central idea of importance of sickness other examples of uh, the prevalence of myths in modernist art and literature would consist of uh, James Joyce's A Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man and uh, Ulysses, two novels that he wrote where in A Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man James Joyce uh, presents Stephen Didalus who has correspondence with both Icarus and Didalus in the initial phase he's more 
like the like the mythical Icarus and later on he matures and becomes the mythical Daedalus while in Ulysses you will find Leopold Bloom who would be the modern bourgeois Ulysses or Odysseus and we have again Stephen Daedalus reappearing in this novel as a figure who would correspond to Ulysses' son, Telemachus, and Leopold Bloom is like a father figure to Stephen Didalus in the novel Ulysses. And also we have uh, W. B. Yeats's Leda and the Swan and The Second Coming. And poems of this sort would often draw upon both Christian and pagan myths to again represent the contemporary spiritual crisis and a critique of modernity, critique of the contemporary civilization by using myths and giving insight into certain ideas like progress, like modernization, like urbanization, like the war. And in this way, the modernist writers, in a very creative manner, engaged with contemporary history. These are uh, some of the books that I used to make this content. We would uh, continue our discussion on modernism and the early 20th century history of ideas in the subsequent videos. Thanks for watching.